Welcome to my deep dive learning path, where I show you everything about AWS Lambda extensions to more easily integrate Lambda with your favorite tools. I'm Julian Wood, a senior developer advocate for serverless at AWS. This video is part of a whole series. If you're wanting a good grounding on what Lambda extensions are, start at the first video to get up to speed. In this video, I'm going to be taking a deeper look into internal extensions and how they work. Internal extensions allow you to modify the startup of the runtime process and run additional scripts. They run in process with your code as separate threads, but still within the single runtime process, which controls the lifecycle and starts and stops them. There are two flavors of internal extensions, language-specific environment variables and wrapper scripts. Language-specific environment variables are set as part of the function configuration. You set your function environment variables for various runtimes. Java tools options, for example, is a variable you can set for Java, Coretto 8 and 11. You use the variable to specify additional command line parameters. You can specify the initialization of tools, specifically the launching of native or Java programming languaging agents using the agent lib or Java agent options. Node options is supported for Node.js 10 and above, and .NET startup hooks is supported for .NET Core 3.1 and above which specifies the path to an assembly DLL that Lambda can use. For example here, you would set Java tools options to use the dash Java agent command line argument when the runtime starts Java to preload an example agent.jar file. You don't need to modify your code to add the agent and internal extensions can be used to auto instrument your code in this way. Using language specific environment variables is the preferred way to set startup properties. Let me show you how to configure the environment variable. I have a Java function configured here. It's a very simple hello world function, which doesn't do much. If I invoke the function, all it's going to do is respond with the body, not much information. Now, what I can do is I can go into the Lambda function environment variables, uh, which is further down over here, and I can add an environment variable for the Java tools option. Now, as I mentioned in the previous slide, I could put a dashed example jar file using the dash java agent value. And this would be, for example, if I had an agent I wanted to add to the Lambda function. So you would package up example agent as a jar file and then deploy it as a layer or include it with the function code. And then the JVM will try to locate the class in example agent and invoke its pre-main method before the application's entry point. But what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna do something slightly different and actually show an entirely codeless solution for this. And this is an example of using uh, Java tools options with dash verbose, verbose colon class. And this is a Java tools option setting to track the loaded classes and their locations. And you can use this, for example, for troubleshooting when you maybe don't know which version of a library is being used. And when the first one in the class path isn't the one used by the applications. And so it's a troubleshooting step that you could just set this environment variable. So I save that environment variable, which is gonna take a short amount of time. And then I'm just going to invoke the Lambda function again. So now what's gonna happen is the, when the Java process starts, the JVM is gonna start with a dash for Bosch colon uh, class and the function execution result is gonna be in the same. But looking at the log output now, I can now see all of the classes that have been loaded. So that's got the classes and the locations and this can help me troubleshoot and understand exactly what's loading when my function invokes. So I can use the Java tools options with specifically Java for a, a number of different ways to help me with my serverless application. You can create a wrapper script to customize the runtime startup behavior of your Lambda function, which allows you to set configuration parameters that cannot be set through language specific environment variables. When you use a wrapper script, Lambda delegates the runtime startup to your script, sending the path to the interpreter and all of the original arguments. Your script can then change the startup behavior of the program. For example, the script can inject and alter the arguments, can set different environment variables or capture diagnostic information or any errors. You specify the script by setting the value of the AWS Lambda exec wrapper environment variable to the file system path of an executable binary or script. To show how a wrapper script works, I have a Python example uh, function, which I'm going to configure a wrapper script for. If I do a test invocation for this Python function, it really doesn't do nothing. All it's doing is doing a hello from Lambda 
And if I look in the CloudWatch logs groups for the function invocation, it is just outputting the event that it receives for the invocation. What I can then do is go again into the environment variables and I can go down and I can configure the environment variable for the AWS Lambda exec wrapper. And I'm going to point that to a wrapper script. And this is going to be a file I'm going to add within the Lambda function folder. So once the environment variable has saved, I can go down and once the function code has loaded, I can see I have the function code, which is just doing the hello, for, uh, hello from Lambda. But this is the wrapper script I want the function to run. And what this is going to do is this is going to launch the Python 3 and add the extra arguments, which is going to be the dash X import time option. And it's going to start the Python interpreter with this additional option. And then when you run the function, Lambda is going to generate a log entry to show the duration of the import time for each input. So I'm wrapping the Lambda function with another script to uh, launch Python with this extra argument. So once that function uh, environment variable has been saved, which I have it over there, if I then go and do another test invocation of the Lambda function and I go to CloudWatch logs and I look at the most recent log stream uh, when it pops up and has been delivered from the Lambda function, this is going to show me a lot more information. So I'm just waiting for the log stream, stream to appear and I select the log stream and what I can see as it appears is here is all the input time information, which is far more information than I had before in the different log uh, entry. And it's showing the duration of the import time for each of those imports. So what I've done is just by configuring the environment variable settings in a Lambda function and launching another wrapper script, Python has been able to launch with another new import time option. So we've looked at internal extensions in more detail how they run within the runtime process in process with your code. There are two ways to use internal extensions, language specific environment variables to import a file during function startup, and then a wrapper script, which I use to demo starting the Python interpreter with a dash X import time option. In the next video, I'm going to be taking a deeper look into external extensions and how they work. For plenty more information, head over to serverlessland.com with lots of resources, blogs, videos, workshops and other learning paths, everything about serverless on AWS. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time to learn about Lambda extensions. My name is Julian Wood and you can find me on Twitter at Julian underscore Wood.